so very appropriate and uh, very useful for Peter to have given the background around chronic lymphocytic leukemia, its epidemiology and biology, uh, because this uh, drug uh, that currently has the uh, number ABT199, or also known as GDC199, uh, is being co-developed by uh, AbbVie and Genentech, and again, is, uh, this study reports data uh, from uh, the phase one study uh, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. So the, <clears throat> the mechanism of action of this drug uh, is to target what is called the apoptotic or programmed cell death pathway. So normally all of the cells in our body and uh, also cancer cells have the potential to uh, die through this normal process of apoptosis. Some, most forms of cancer are um, a disorder of very rapid proliferation of the cells. In contrast, chronic lymphocytic leukemia, although it has some increased proliferation, is predominantly a disease of prolonged lifespan and accumulation of these abnormal cells. There's very good data that um, a dominant mechanism uh, leading to that um, accumulation and prolonged lifespan is through overexpression of uh, molecules of the BCL2 family uh, that lead to inhibition of the normal um, proteins within the cell that, if they were allowed to have their normal action, would trigger uh, this apoptotic cascade. So the mechanism by which ABT199 acts is that it mimics uh, the activity of these um, BH3-only proteins binding to BCL2 and removing the inhibition that then allows the cells to progress down this pathway of programmed cell death or apoptosis. So this particular study, as I said, is uh, of this molecule ABT199, uh, which is a highly selective uh, orally administered drug that specifically targets that uh, molecule BCL2. This study has uh, began uh, just on three years ago, <clears throat> and earlier analyses uh, had shown anti-tumor activity, but uh, some issues with rapid cell death, uh, a syndrome called tumor lysis syndrome that can lead to biochemical abnormalities uh, that can be uh, clinically uh, significant for these patients. So this report is a, uh, an update with more prolonged uh, follow-up, and now with the numbers of patients uh, entered allows us to look at specific prognostic subsets, as Peter mentioned, particularly those patients with the deletion of chromosome 17P, with disease that had been refractory to the most potent chemotherapy combination known, uh, that of fludarabine-based treatment, or those with uh, an unmutated immunoglobulin heavy chain gene. Any of these three parameters predict for a poor uh, outcome with conventional treatments. As mentioned in the earlier phases of this study, uh, the issue of tumor lysis syndrome had been seen, and <clears throat> this, uh, the later phase of the trial used a more gradual uh, stepwise dose escalation uh, to what was called a designated cohort dose, and 400 milligrams was then selected uh, for expansion uh, in the safety, uh, expanded safety cohort and is the dose that is being investigated moving forward with, uh, with this molecule. So this, uh, the phase one study allowed enrolment of patients with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, and Matt Davids will be, uh, from the Dana-Farber Cancer Centre will be presenting that data uh, on Sunday, and the abstract that I'll be presenting uh, on Saturday afternoon deals specifically with uh, CLL, chronic lymphocytic leukaemia. So the headline results of this trial are that um, safety was quite acceptable. There was uh, a, a moderate rate of uh, neutropenia and diarrhea, although almost all of these events, uh, certainly the, the diarrhea were a very low grade and very easily manageable. And uh, the only grade three, four event that occurred in more than 10% of patients was, was transient neutropenia um, that was supportable with growth factor use. And the rate of uh, infection complicating that neutropenia was only 7%. So overall, a very well-tolerated therapy. 
with the modifications to the uh, dosing schedule, there had been no further cases of clinically significant uh, or grade three or four tumor lysis syndrome. And so that concern has been well uh, dealt with and appears to be ameliorated with that gradual step up program uh, and appropriate um, preventative measures. In terms of effectiveness, uh, the data is shown here. So the overall response rate now with 105 patients treated uh, remains uh, very high at 77%. And one of uh, the features um, perhaps differentiating this agent from other targeted therapies is the fact that we are seeing uh, true complete remissions in 23% of patients and uh, even using uh, techniques to um, look for what is called minimal residual disease. Uh, so one leukemic cell in as many as 10,000 cells within the bone marrow uh, of uh, the uh, 11 patients who uh, achieved complete remission who were tested for that, uh, five of those had attained a negative state for minimal residual disease, uh, showing a very high quality of remission. The uh, adverse risk subsets that I mentioned, so deletion of chromosome 17P, fludarabine refractory disease, or unmutated immunoglobulin heavy chain status, the overall response rates were sustained in the 75 to 80% uh, range for those subsets. And again, complete remission rates uh, did not differ from the overall group with uh, those being between 22 and 29%. As mentioned, the 400 milligram dose has been identified as um, the optimally effective dose and patients within this dose escalation study who would receive doses of 400 milligrams or above are showing very durable responses with 59% remaining free of progression uh, with our longest patient uh, just out under 30 months. Uh, but the median follow up in these patients uh, is uh, just over one year. So in conclusion, uh, as a single agent, uh, an orally delivered drug, ABT199, uh, continues to show very high response rates, including significant complete remission rates, uh, with some patients having no detectable disease by our uh, current gold standard method for MRD detection. The complete remission rate and overall response rate is sustained in uh, those adverse uh, risk subsets that we mentioned. Responses appear durable with the median uh, progression-free survival not reached uh, at 24 months. The risk of tumor lysis syndrome that had been identified early in this study as uh, a signal of clinical concern has been uh, mitigated with appropriate preventative measures and a graduated stepwise dose escalation. Uh, and uh, the development of this molecule continues um, of, um, to me, of substantial interest uh, Andrew Roberts from the Walter and Eliza Hall Institute will also be presenting the first data at this meeting with the combination of ABT199 and rituximab with uh, a very short follow-up just under six months. But even at that point, the overall response rate uh, is 84% with 36% of patients achieving a complete remission. So as a single agent, this is certainly very active in combination with a higher complete remission rate. Uh, and in that trial, there have also been three patients who have been able to cease drug and remain in ongoing remission up to 12 months after cessation, raising the prospect of the potential for a limited duration of treatment uh, despite uh, relapsed and refractory disease. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, questions from the audience, please. Yes. Would you mention your name and affiliation? Yeah, my name is Anders Nyström from Sweden. Uh, you mentioned the combination. Yes. Is, is it an attractive op option to combine this with ibrutinib? Yes, indeed. Um, so in laboratory tests, the combination of ABT199 and ibrutinib uh, is uh, very potent in both uh, chronic lymphocytic leukemia and some forms of mantle cell lymphoma. Um, it's uh, the negotiations regarding the companies involved is uh, quite intricate, uh, but there is agreement and commitment from both companies uh, to begin clinical trials with the combination later this year. 